this week we are continuing with our conversations with various stakeholders about the state of South Africa building up to the general election on the 29th of May. Now, this week Morning Live is focusing on the views of the youth and today's panel is made up of six ordinary South Africans in the country's youth category and uh, they'll be sharing their perspectives on the state of the country, their views on what is working and what is not working, what their hopes are for the future of South Africa and beyond. So uh, let me introduce you to our uh, panel. And first up, we've got Simam Kele Fatuse. He's an activist running an organization called Amplifying Youth Voices that encourages the youth to be active citizens. So uh, that's Simam Kele. We'll talk to him in a short while. Then Karnu van Heerden. Karnu is, uh, he studied theology to a master's level and he's the Gauteng Regional Director at uh, Ratio Christi, an organization on campuses that encourages students to have conversations around politics, religion, philosophy and science. Our next panelist is Katlejo Moahi. She works as a quality assurance officer and is based in the East Rand. She also has a YouTube channel and a video podcast about uh, different social and economic issues. Then we've got Jocelyn van Vollenhoven, a South African matric student specializing in maths and business studies. And uh, she's from the Free State. We've got Lita. Lita's with us. She's uh, based in Quebec. She's 21 years old. She's an LLB student at the Nelson Mandela University. And then finally, Jasmina Singh, 22 years old, high school teacher, uh, teaches English. And she's from Durban, a fellow of the Jake Scowell Fellowship Program, which focuses on nurturing. Okay, I'm so glad this time when I say good morning, I'm going to hear your voices and I'm, and I'm, holding, I'm, I'm, I'm holding my thumbs that everything works out perfectly. So one by one, Simam Keller, let me begin with you because uh, from my perspective, you're the top of the screen, you are the first on my left hand side, so I'm going to start that way. Let's, let's start by your perspectives of being young in South Africa and some of the, the positives and negatives that you feel. Uh, good morning, Leanne, and thank you very much for the opportunity. I, I think for me, being young in South Africa is is a complex experience. It's it's marked by challenges and opportunities. Uh, on one hand, one would could say we have inherited a, a rich history of resilience and activism. You know, with a with a legacy of fighting for social and and, and equality. Uh, of course, with such a history, we, we ought to be agents of, of change in our communities and to engage in democratic processes. However, uh, uh, many young people face significant challenges, whether you're talking about unemployment, you know, the funding crisis in our universities, or socioeconomic inequalities that, that persist to this day. And these can lead to a sense of um, disillusionment and frustration, you know, because it's really not nice to study, graduate and not work. But again, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a complex experience because even in the sight of all these challenges, I believe, uh, you know, young people in South Africa remain resourceful and innovative, you know, finding ways to navigate the system and building their own opportunities and you know, like us on the panel, determined, you know, to, to push for progress and, and social justice. Amazing. Simon Keller, thank you. I, I, I love the opening statement you said, being young in South Africa is a complex experience. I think that's what I'm going to take away. I've written down exactly that, and, and I want to delve a bit deeper into it. But I'm going to continue to go through each one of you, just giving you two minutes to tell us how you feel, just as we heard from Simon Keller. Next up is Jocelyn. Um, Jocelyn, thanks, thanks again. Uh, thanks again to all of you for re, re, rejoining with us this morning after yesterday. We couldn't get it going. But Jocelyn, talk to us. How, how are you feeling? Good morning, Leanne. I am actually feeling very good this morning. But me as a young South African, it's a bit confusing being, because you have, like you said, complex feelings. We are more privileged than what we were but we're not where we can be today. I feel like the youth has to be encouraged to do better. We struggle with a lot of issues, like we said, dealing with university funds and all of that. But the fact that we do have those opportunities, we must be grateful for it. 
South Africa was in a very deep pressing state, and we are slowly working towards being better. So I feel like being a youth in South Africa is actually very, at this moment, it's being very privileged because my parents didn't have the opportunity that I have. And I feel like I'm going to take that opportunity and build the future better, if like, that makes sense. It, it, it makes all the sense in the world. It really does. I, I as, as I said, I'm going I'm to quiz you a little bit more on that. And I'm just taking a pearls of wisdom from all of you, just saying, and, and, and from you, I'm seeing that as, as much as you're saying, we are privileged as the youth, more opportunities than our parents, but it's not enough. That's what I got from you, and I'm going to quiz you a little bit later on on that. Uh, Karnu, let me come to you. Talk to me about the, the same issues. I mean, what is it like for you uh, being young in South Africa? Morning, Leanne. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, it just firstly, it's an honor being here this morning. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I must say it's, it's a mixed, mixed experience. Um, now, why do I say that? Well, mixed in the sense of like being active at universities, multiple campuses for some time and, you know, not just my own experience, but seeing the experience of my fellow students whom I studied with and worked with and also the other universities that I've visited. Um, there is sort of an energy amongst the youth, uh, you know, trying to be very active, hope to change the country, hope to make a bit better future I mean who doesn't want who doesn't want that um, and so there is a sense in which the youth have a lot of potential in this country and you know we, we hope for change um, I mean this is the 30 years of the Republic of South Africa most of us were born when the country sort of uh, uh, became the Republic and we grew up with with everything and uh, seeing it develop and change over the years, you know, we have many times we think, okay, yeah, great developments and uh, stuff like that, but also seeing the, the decline and seeing uh, all the issues. Because why I say it's mixed is the other side, there's also something that deeply concerns me. Um, and this is something, you know, that also nags at me from time to time. You look at the state of the country, um, not even to talk about global issues at this point in time, but just like at South Africa as a whole, you, you, you become concerned. I know many youth that um, are very pessimistic, cynical and apathetic um, regarding the future of South Africa. They don't think they can make a change. I mean, the numbers that have registered um, for the elections among the youth sort of display that. It's still quite low. and. Um, it's deeply concerning, you yeah. know, and yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Kanu, I, some some valuable points brought up there, uh, and 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 I, again, I'm going to delve a bit deeper in a short while. Katlejo, I've got you now um, in my vision. Talk to us about your side of things and 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 how you view it. I know you've got a YouTube channel as well, so you you speak out, and and I like the way you speak out. In fact, I I, I watched a, a short clip of yours, and it, it was quite interesting to hear about it. You you're in quality assurance, and you're in the East Rand. Perhaps you talk to us about about your experience. Okay, thank you so much, morning, Leanne. We appreciate the opportunity. Uh, for me, I think knowledge is a very important thing for us as the youth in particular and everybody else in South Africa. Um, as uh, everybody else has mentioned, there's so much potential for South Africa. However, if we don't have the right knowledge, I think it's easy for us to be discouraged. If we don't have the right knowledge regarding our nation, regarding our politics, regarding our history and more, then it's like, why should I even vote? But if we have have more knowledge and understanding of our history of the global you know arena and how we can make a change and what our country needs then i think instead of being so pessim uh, pessimistic we can say okay this is the situation these are our issues these are potential solutions and this is how i can make an impact i think most of our youth are so discouraged because it's like I just see negativity all around, but if we uh, equip the youth with the right information and the right knowledge, I think more positivity will come through. You know, I mm. think uh, more, more of us can say, 
I can make a positive difference, which is what I seek to do with my YouTube channel. Yeah, Thank I love you. it. I love it. And, 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 and you do it in a hard hitting yet humorous way. And we'll get back to that in a short while. I like I do like your your particular video on the ministers and their salaries and, and, and all of that stuff. We'll talk to you about that now, Katleja. Don't worry, I'm not going to let you get off the hook with that one, adding some humor into it, but very <laughs> serious humor. Um, Jasmina. Let's talk to you. Um, you are a teacher, so not only are you um, young and a part of the youth, you, you teach even younger students, I imagine. You're based in Durban. Talk to us about your experience of being a young person in South Africa. Morning. Um, yes, so I am finding myself in a bit of a unique position. So being a born free, but also getting to teach and engage with a lot of other younger people, also, you know, born freeze and in this new South Africa that we understand. I'm sure you might hear some background noise that is my learners getting ready for their first lesson. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, building on what everyone has shared already, you know, South Africa is a very unique context. You know, we're not like other countries, you know, we have different issues and we have things that are very particular to us. And I think when it comes to thinking about the youth, understanding the issues that happen, you know, on a grassroots level, right? Young people are the ones that bear the brunt of the social issues in, uh, you know, in South African society, you know, when it comes to youth unemployment, when it comes to education in schooling terms, but then you leave school and then you have to find funding for university. And then even after you get your degree, then it's about finding a job. But then even after you find your job, then it's about, you know, um, looking out for your parents and your families. And there's just a lot of responsibility, I think, that sits on young people um, and a big expectation for us um, as we are, you know, young people are the future future for South Africa. So, yeah, yeah I think uh, yeah. attention to those kinds of things is very important. And, and nice aspects that you've brought up because many, many more that we haven't heard of. And these are these are hard is 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 that generation that keeps having to pay back, pay back, pay back. When do you ever develop when all you're doing is paying back? So we, we will look more at that. And then I think, Lita, we haven't spoken to you. So you're the final one. Give us give us your two minutes of, of what it's like. You're in Quebec in the Eastern Cape. You're an LLB student um, at university, so I imagine you see so much going on there and a, a lot of um, enthusiastic members of the youth wanting to see and make a difference. Good morning, Leanne. I hope I'm audible. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I think, again, as everyone has said on the panel so far, the youth are in a very unique position. I think it is, we're very aware of what our past looks like. We're aware of what's happened. We're aware of the fights that have occurred. But I think also within trying to find our way as a, like as a free youth, we're trying to find our way as those who aren't uh, oppressed necessarily in the same way as our parents as our parents were and I think also again it's a very unique struggle considering that education has become so much more expensive that it's more expensive to live as youth it's more expensive to try and find funding as youth and I think a greater part of the youth are becoming so desensitized to politics they're becoming desensitized to what's happening around them because also they don't feel as though there's a difference that they can actually actively make even with the knowledge that they have. I don't think there's a lack of knowledge necessarily, because if you're on social media, you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram, you're continually flooded with news. I think it's also just uh, not knowing what to do with all this information thereafter. It's like, okay, great, I know of unemployment, I know about all these issues, then how do I move forward now? What do I then do about this? What do I then, you know, who do I then talk to about these things? What infrastructure can I put in place to help with these things? Um, I think that's the unique struggle, the unique perspective that current day youth have. Mm. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great. You bringing in politics to this, because that's where I want to go a little bit, is, is, is to find out, and we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to come back to each one of you again, uh, just to ask you, in the context of the things that you've said, do any of these political parties talk to you? Do they, do they help you? Do, you? do you feel like they're speaking to you? These are just some of the issues we're going to ask the youth when we come back. Also remember, you can contribute in your comments and views on uh, our X account, and that's at Morning Live SABC. We look forward to hearing from you, but don't go anywhere. This conversation continues after the break.
All right, welcome back. Let's continue our conversation now with uh, some of the young people that we have gathered here on the program to talk about some of their issues. So I can see that we, we're losing some and getting some and it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll just continue with who I've got on the screen at the moment just to, to keep this conversation going. So um, Karno, I'm going to pick up on you. Uh, Simon Kelly, I can see he's having a little bit of problem, but we'll get him back up in a moment and then I'll come back to him as a question. So Karno, you're saying it's a mixed experience being young. There's an energy in the youth for change, but you live in an era, and I, and I do like this, you live in an era where you've seen things develop in front of your eyes, but at the same time, you've also th seen things being destroyed. And, and, and that for me is quite, it's quite, um, quite a nice way of putting it, in fact, because it is the truth in your years. You've seen South Africa grow, but you've seen it fall at the same time. The politicians that are out there right now, the electoral system, the, the fact that the 29th of May is the time to go out and vote, is anybody talking to you uh, as, a, as a young man in South Africa to, to try and help you in the situation and the things that you see and that in, is encouraging you to get involved in voting? Thank you, Yo. That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, I must say, Yo, there is amongst, if we look at all the political parties and people that are running at this moment, I see, you know, you could just, you know, look at their values and look them up and they have their campaigns on social media and so on. But I feel at times there's a bit of a disconnect. I think a disconnect from the voters and those who uh, wish we should vote for them. <laughs> Firstly, with the parties, the, the modes of communication are definitely not always the most effective. Um, you know, we posters are put up when the election time gets close. Oh, now we campaign and we do stuff. But where's everyone in the rest of the year? <laughs> I mean, uh, I listened to the radio the other uh, morning and the speaker was saying, you know, election time is the best time of the year because then things get done. <laughs> they fill the bottles. There's no load shedding. But uh, what's going to happen when it's, uh, when it's done, you know? Um, it just feels, again, the modes of communication from many of the parties are not effective. It's a lot of like generic, oh, we'll change the country. Oh, no, we'll bring change. Mm. Together we can do this. And it's, you know, I'm not saying that's bad, but having these slogans, I'm like, okay, great, but you need to actively show me yeah um and the, that's where the disconnect is now the disconnect from the other side uh, if i could summarize a lot of people that vote for the parties sometimes um they just don't know the values of their respective parties it's just like well this is the party it's the opposition it's not this party therefore vote okay. now i'm not saying that's the bad reason to vote but um i think it's good to vote in accordance with values look what these parties their policies stand for and i mean like they have offices, they do campaigns, they have stalls everywhere. Go up to these people, encourage all youth, go up to them, ask them hard questions, uh, you know, <laughs> grill them. It's, exactly. It's a good thing. Let them you deserve. Need to, Let them deserve yeah, your vote they need is to what you're saying. You. Absolutely, they, they absolutely, Kano. Uh, Jocelyn, let me come to you. Um, uh, Jocelyn, there you are. You said something which is also quite, quite, it, it, it's, it's important because you have said that you have many more opportunities now than your parents ever had. Um, however, you describe yourselves as the youth, as privileged, but I suppose you're speaking from your lived reality because I think a lot may disagree with you, but you do say that more can be done. Again, I ask you a, a similar question to Karnu. From what you're hearing where we're saying more can be done, where you are having a better life as a South African than your parents do, is it good enough and are the parties that are out there right now representing you and your needs? I feel like the parties are not giving enough information to the youth. It's like they're just giving enough so that we know what's going on, but they're not allowing us, giving us that free space to ask what can we do and how do we go about things. And as a youth in South Africa, I encourage us to ask questions, to do our research before we just do something, because most of us don't even know what's going on in the country. Because we feel hopeless, we feel like we don't know what to do about it. So my thing is, let us rather seek for information. And like you guys said, 
question the parties and let us know what our values in the party are mm. and know, let us know our importance in the party because some of us feel like we're not that important that's why many don't even vote anymore but as young south africans we need to know that our vote does count and we do matter yeah, you do. And that's the reality, is that you count more than anybody counts because you are the future of this country. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of older people that are making these promises are going to be moving on and out and they've made their wealth and it's now up to you to pick up the pieces. Simam Keller, let me come back to you. I can see that your photo, your, your, your picture is clear now and everything's good there. You say young, being young in South Africa is a very complex experience, which it is. I mean, from what I'm hearing from all of you, it's an exceptionally complex experience. But again, are these elections addressing your complexities? Is anybody speaking directly to you to encourage you to stand in an, a long queue to say, oh man, you deserve my vote because you are the one that's gonna go fight for me. Are you hearing that from any of these parties? Well, there are a couple of them, you know, uh, but I'm afraid to say it's the new ones, uh, you know, that I think in one way or the other or the other will resonate with the needs of young people and address, you know, whatever it is that they need. But the problem is that the, the political system in, in South Africa, you know, often seems to be detached from the realities and the aspirations of, of our, you know, of, our, of us as young people in South Africa. You know, many of us find the political, you know, find that the political discourse rather uh, and governance structures are, are, centered, are centered around older generations, you know, with very little room for, for youth voices and perspectives. Uh, I don't know if you know, as much as I'm saying there are new parties that in one way or the other resonate with the needs of young people, I don't know, you know, how long it will take for them to create a room for young people. And I think this is evidenced by several factors, you know, for instance, the, the limited youth uh, representation that still persists to, to, to this day. There is, you know, a noticeable lack of uh, young people in positions of political power and decision making. And the absence of, of, of that leads to the neglect of youth interests and creates a sense of exclusion. Even the new parties, yes, they've got, you know, a better representation of young people in their structures as things stand. I don't know how are they going to, you know, to, to deal with that when they get into government, if they do, you know, because still you, you, you find that, you know, one finds that there's still a resistance when it comes to fully, you know, accepting, you know, and opening opening the door for young people, even in instances where there are policies and laws that seek to advance youth interests, they are not prioritized, you know, mm. because there are there are not enough young leaders in those circles to to push the youth agenda. Mm. And that's, I mean, that's something we saw. I think it was we were talking about the average age in, in the ministers and in parliament. I think it was something like um, average age 61, which, which is, is not really speaking to any one of you, to be honest with me. Um, uh, let's, let me again, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm on you now. Um, uh, 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 no, Katejo, I'm with you. Where are you? There you are, Katlejo. Sorry, I've written notes in the order that you spoke. Katlejo, you, you speak to the ministers. And I, I mean, the, the, the video clip that I was talking to was one where you broke down the issue of what cabinet ministers earn in comparison to the economy of the country. You then compared our size of our economy to more developed economies that have less people in power that pay a lot less than we do to ministers, deputy ministers and all the perks that they get and the parliamentarians who are spending the money on themselves as opposed to on the youth as, as an example and a topic we're talking to and the betterment of the people of the country it's for the betterment of their lives, not for anyone else. So perhaps you want to talk a bit about this. I mean, what are you seeing at the moment in Parliament clearly doesn't make you happy. Not at all, not at all. And I think it shouldn't make any South African, young or old, happy. 
You know, when uh, our current leadership came into power, their promise was, okay, guys, we come from apartheid, you guys were marginalized and all of that, and now we want to bring equality to you. We want to give you equal opportunity. And now they have all this opportunity. Now they have the purse right in front of them. And instead of using it to, you know, give us the skills and, and instead of using it to give black people and all the poor in the country proper housing, you know, everything that we need, they choose to give themselves massive salaries or, you know, if, I don't know about you guys, I work and uh, my job description determines how much I earn. My uh, results determine how much I earn. For some reason, logic just goes out the window when it comes to politics. There's almost nothing <laughs> when they do something. They're destroying the country. They're destroying ESCOM, Transnet, and all these other things. Yet they are rewarded for that. We have a person earning 4.4 million, more than the president himself. And you're like, what is your job? The secretary to parliament? Like, how does that even make sense? And how are you comfortable with that when you are seeing that the youth don't have finances to go to school? How are you comfortable with that when children are jumping rivers to go to school? How are you comfortable with that with small businesses failing to make it because they don't have electricity because of you again in ESCOM. So that has shown us that the politicians in power do not give, you know, they don't care at all about us as the youth and even old people. They care about themselves and it is it is about time now that we open our eyes and see that they do not care about us and forget the 350s, forget the KFC that they give us during campaigns and vote them out on the 29th of May and give somebody else a chance. Somebody else that has shown in their principles, in their past, in their policies that they are not there for their pockets, they are not there for one particular race, but they are there for the well-being of all of South Africa. Mm, Thank you. Powerful, very powerful words. I'm going to take a very quick break here on the program. When we come back, we're going to be uh, getting the word from Lita and Jasmina. And then we're going to wrap up the conversation. And I'm going to give each one of our panelists again the opportunity to say, most importantly, are you going to vote or not? Do you feel like someone deserves your vote or are you keeping away from the polling stations come 29th of May? Let's find out. That's after the break. Back to our conversation with the youth. Let me call them up. We don't have too much time left. So, Jasmina, I'm coming straight to you because you you told us some of the issues that the youth are facing. Uh, you're a teacher at the moment. You called us a very unique country. Uh, we have very different issues to the rest of the world, but that the young bear the brunt of many of the issues with funding crises, education, there's no jobs. When you do finally get a job, you've got to look after your family and pay everything back. So let's talk to that same question. Is there a party that's speaking to you to help with these issues that you're grappling with? Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think in South Africa, right, we are, you know, notoriously known as one of the most unequal countries in the world, right? I mean, you see it in areas. You have the ultra wealthy sections, and then you have um, township areas where, you know, there's no service delivery, you know, where kids are going to underfunded schools and things like that. And I think. When it comes to the average South African, one of the main issues we've seen with politics for a long time is almost this kind of uh, loyalty politics pattern where, you know, we're voting for the certain party because, you know, they were leading us in the anti-apartheid movement or, you know, I'm voting for this party because historically they've made these kinds of promises. But I think it's time for us to start looking at, you know, reality and looking at actual action instead of promises that parties have made in the past. Um, and, you know, at this point, I'm not happy with, you know, the actions of our ruling party. I'm not happy with, you know, the corruption levels that we all consider very normal. You know, I'm not happy with the lack of service delivery and, you know, the lining of pockets that politicians get that we miss out on, you know, on the ground here. So I am looking at different parties, but, you know, like we have been echoing in this discussion, um, there is a disconnect between what is on paper in these manifestos of parties and what they actually do and the kinds of um, actions that they take. 
So it's unfortunate that we don't have a concrete answer. Like, I don't know what to advise people when it comes to which party you should vote for. Mm. But I think it is important for us to make the decision of look at your reality, you know, look at the problems that you face and that people around you face and that people you talk to on the daily complain about and at least put your voice out there to make a difference. So, okay. you know, even if our you know leading party is not... Um, changed oh. at least we can get other parties into power and things like that all right lita quickly your views on all of us i mean you're echoing very much so all the same things there you're saying politicians are not listening to the youth they're not helping they're not making a difference is anyone speaking to you as a as a young person i think again i'm also going to be echoing the same sentiment that has been echoed out throughout the panel it is very difficult as youth to find where your voice is being heard, but above your voice being heard, where you can see practical change. I think South Africa as a democracy and theoretically is a beautiful country. Our constitution theoretically would work wonderfully, but now because of the lack of infrastructures in place and the practical way of it functioning, we find ourselves with that disconnect. We find it so difficult to now see the infrastructure being built, see the change being made, see our education system being improved, because all that funding, again, is going to the pockets of politicians. Mm. So I think it's very difficult to come and trust the people who are telling you lies and then assuming that you will trust them the next year. But funnily enough, it's worked for the ANC so far. I mean, they've been voted in continually. It seems as though, again, as I think Jasmina was mentioning, the country is trauma bonded. The country doesn't want to leave alone this particular party. We're all still under the shackle of, because they did this in apartheid, which was valuable, now we also automatically have to vote for them, which I think is not the metric we should be using for who to put in power in the democracy. Okay. I think they were effective in the beginning parts of it and then in the transitional period. But I think in the current state, we need a new political party. Right. Which one that would be? I also don't have the answer, unfortunately. Okay. So because even with the speaking, sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. I, 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 I can't even give you guys time to wrap this up. So I'm going to ask you by a show of hands. Who is going to vote on the 29th of May? One, two, all of you. Good. Do you know who you're voting for? By a show of hands. If you do know, put your hand up. If you don't, keep it down. So only Jocelyn's still open to finding out who she's going to vote for. And then finally, as the youth in South Africa, are you feeling confident about the future? And I want your hands up if you think that this is the country that has got a great future for you, or if it hasn't, keep your hand down. Hand up if you want to think that South Africa is the way to go. All right, Jocelyn, you're the one that we need to speak to and political parties need to find you and someone needs to make sure that you are changed to believe that this is the country, that you are going to find a party to vote for. But for the rest of you, thank you for your time. Thanks to every one of you for sharing your views here on the program. And I can promise you, you've inspired a lot of people. I can see from the comments that we've been getting. They loved you. They're loving you. And this is what we've got to look forward to going into the future here in South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program. And that wraps up the youth segment for today.